It's Tuesday, February 21st, 2023. This is my first update this week. It uh, has been a little bit eventful, so let me catch up. Uh, Saturday, uh, you may you may remember uh, last Friday, I did a, a front brake job on my half ton, and that is meaningful for the rest of the story. And I also changed the block heater in my big diesel truck. And so that's meaningful too, for how that's gonna affect this week. Saturday, I was so incredibly tired from the, the jobs I did on Friday. I uh, just rested all day. I rested all day Saturday. And uh, then Sunday, uh, Sunday, my wife and I worked in the shop here uh, ripped up a whole whack more lumber, uh, got some orders ready, and she's been building frames too. So that's really, really helpful to me that she's building frames. Uh, it takes a, a big load off my shoulders, and she has a long time to do it. She's a couple of months now uh, still, and uh, so she just works away at it for an hour or two every day, and uh, she makes good progress. I very much appreciate that. So Monday, <clears throat> Monday I had uh, I had a reason I needed to go to town and town Selkirk. Uh, I'll back up. I, I want to get some of my uh, parts cutting ready for uh, Thursday because we're going to Winnipeg on Thursday. And uh, I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to see Ian and <clears throat> these parts are for Ian. So I wanted to get those to him uh, because he needs to do some work with those parts this spring. And uh, I can detail that in, in the other videos. But uh, th therefore I needed to get to town to buy some more lumber to finish building those parts for Ian. So I thought I need to, and I want to go to town with the diesel to get the lumber because it has an eight foot bed and it's far easier to haul lumber in an eight foot bed than a six point something or other bed on the little half ton. I can do it in a half ton, <clears throat> but I'd rather do it in the, in the big truck if you got the big truck. Um, So I decided to take, uh, but I, I didn't want to start the big truck because uh, I don't, <laughs> because I haven't been plugging it in. And I haven't been plugging it in because when I poured the coolant back in the engine, it didn't fill it up. And I don't know how far up it is. I don't want to run that block heater in, you know, without fluid because I'll burn it out again. And it's actually fairly high on the block. Uh, so that's a problem. So I want to go to town with the half ton get some more coolant for the truck. It's kind of a special coolant. I want to go to the dealer, get it, and uh, <clears throat> then come back. And uh, I'll pick up the lumber with the half ton was my thinking. I had a whole bunch of errands to do in town with the little half ton. So I got everything loaded up. I had a big load of honey I needed to deliver. And you see I'm talking in past tense like it never happened so you see what's coming um i got all ready and i headed out i got three miles from home just not quite to the little town here where i live near and uh <laughs> my front wheel fell off my truck and to show you that picture here And so if you ever wonder how you get a wheel, how do you get a rim off a vehicle without taking the tire off? Well, I can do it for you if you need it done. It's, it's not pretty though, uh, <clears throat> because I was so tired on Friday doing that job, I didn't torque the lug nuts. I've been working on vehicles for nearly 50 years and uh, that's the first time I've ever done that. So, it's just a matter of being so tired and needing the job to end and needing to rest. I feel really bad about that. I feel really stupid. Um, I didn't mess up the truck too bad. 
And by the grace of God, I didn't go out of control and go in the ditch or roll over or nothing. I just came to a stop on the highway right at the end of my buddy's driveway. <laughs> so, uh, however, he wasn't available to help me out. I had another neighbor here help me out. So the truck was running, I was warm, and it was cold out too, so I didn't want to be walking a long way. Uh, and I phoned, uh, I phoned a neighbor here who's, who's a mechanic. He, he does a lot of my work, especially work on my tractor and small motors and stuff like that. Uh, so I called him up and I, I said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> um, I didn't even have a jack in the truck that worked. The, the stock jack in the truck was no good. So I couldn't even lift it up and get the, I, I was kind of disgusted with myself and I thought, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice the parts. I'm going to get this tire off of there and I'm going to drive it home on the rotor. But, uh, and I maybe should have done that because uh, I thought somehow the tire wasn't ruined, but it was, the tire was ruined. It slid on the pavement quite a ways. Uh, and that's too bad because that's like a $350 four month old tire on there. So that's the first expense I caused myself. Um, and knowing that he works on all kinds of small uh, re recreational equipment, quads and side-by-sides and tractors, he works on tractors, he, but he works on snowmobiles too. And I said, I said, you know what? <laughs> I said, just uh, a crazy idea. He said, you, you got an old snowmobile ski sitting there, bring that. So he did. Because the problem was, I had a spare tire and everything there, but the problem was when the, when the wheel came off, it bent the uh, lug studs and uh, you couldn't even put a spare on it. So it was either a tow truck job or, as it turns out, a snowmobile ski <laughs> job. It's one of the few times I appreciate snow because he came with that. Uh, he brought a jack, jacked up the truck and took that tire off. And uh, we set that rotor right down on a snowmobile ski and drove it home, <laughs> like three miles. <laughs> drove it to his place, which is not quite as far as my place. So uh, it's in his shop now. I'll show you a little clip of doing that. So it's a bit, uh, I don't know if it's Cousin Eddie. No, it's, uh, it's red green is what that is. Um, and it, it was snowing that morning and it had snowed a little bit. So there was a, a dusting of snow on the highway. Uh, well, I had about a mile of paved road and then two miles of gravel road to go. And the paved road fared a whole lot better than the gravel road. Uh, as far as how well this worked, and the gravel kind of started giving way a bit. and then I was just kind of run, running the ski on the gravel and it, it messed up the ski bad. Uh, but it was a, it was a junk ski in, in his junk pile anyway. So we got it in his garage and he started looking at it. And so today's job is to get to town and get uh, new lug studs. Um, and I have, I have lug nuts that I've already given him to uh, put it back together and he's just going to put the spare on to start with and then I'll figure that out and it destroyed the rim uh, so I need to buy a rim or I don't know I'll cross that bridge when I get to it and maybe a tire because the, the spare tire that's on the you know under the truck probably no good it's I think it holds air but you don't want to load it or anything those things are usually pretty rotten so I'm not sure what to do there. Should have kept my old tires. I could have used one of those. But anyway, so the good news is um, I didn't destroy the truck too bad. And uh, I didn't get hurt. Nobody else got hurt. I didn't wreck anything else, you know, infrastructure wise. Uh, so I feel really stupid. And it's a very humbling experience to, uh, you know, have that happen. I, I've been, I've been overwhelmed and uh, busy and tired and I was just more tired than normal that day and that evening. So that's what's been going on. 
So my situation now is I still need to get to town, get coolant for the diesel before I can use it. And now I also need to get to town and get lug nuts, lug studs for, uh, for my half ton so I can get it out of my neighbor's garage. I got no, I'm running out of vehicles. I got no more vehicles. Uh, the only thing I have to drive is my camper van. <laughs> so that's Cousin Eddie. Uh, I'm pulling Cousin Eddie today. I'm going to town in the middle of the winter with the camper van uh, to get parts for the half ton. I could drive the diesel. I, I'm confident enough to drive the diesel the way it is. I don't think it's very low on fluid and that's not really too much of a concern of mine, but um, it was minus 34 last night and because I'm shy to plug it in, I, I can't plug it in to start it and there's no way I'm going to voluntarily crank that engine over at minus 34. Uh, so because an idiot is, we're going in the camper van this morning, get some parts. So that's the story. And uh, then I need to uh, get the get the diesel going. And I don't think it'll be later today, but tomorrow then jump in the diesel in the morning, go back to town and get the lumber that I need. And then work, what is that, Wednesday? I can work Wednesday. Yeah, I got to get these parts uh, made up and packaged up on Wednesday, which I should be able to do. If nothing else goes wrong, I should have plenty of time to do that because it's a pretty simple cut. It's a, it's a simple cut and a couple of rip cuts and Bob's your uncle. It's just 600 times is all. So, um, so that's where I'm at and I'm really tired today still and I uh, had a meeting this morning and, and that was kind of good because it got me out of bed. I didn't want to get out of bed. Uh, I'm very tired, but I'm letting the camper warm up, <laughs> letting the van warm up. And then of course I haven't used the van in a long time, but we've had a, a couple of uh, freeze thaw cycles, nothing dramatic, but just enough to cause some ice and uh, driver's doors froze shut. Thankfully, I got in the passenger door, so I got to start it up. And typically that van produces really good heat. I've got it running out there uh, to hopefully warm up and, and I, I hope to thaw that door out so I can get it open. I don't want to crawl across the passenger door all day <laughs> in town. I got a few stops to make, so that would be very inconvenient. So winter in Canada and old vehicles, winter and old vehicles are not made for each other. Winter is very difficult with old vehicles. We, we try to, we try to have reliable vehicles, reliable equipment, uh, buildings that are in good repair, all that kind of stuff because winter is so harsh and it gets so out of hand, so incredibly fast if uh, if things start going wrong and uh, I mean case in point right so that's uh, that's where I'm at and I'm hopefully the van is I can, hopefully I can get in the van and uh, then I'll be off to town to get my parts and make my mechanic happy and get my truck out of his shop so I'm ho I hope you're having a better few days now than I've been having. <laughs> I'm in good spirits, a little disgusted with myself for forgetting to tighten those lug nuts. Uh, but it was pretty funny. It was pretty funny to, I called it a, to back in the 60s, uh, Dodge had a car, at least in Canada. I think it was a Canadian, Canadian only car. Uh, in the 60s, Dodge had a, the Dodge Polara. So my half ton is a Dodge. And uh, the company Polaris makes snowmobiles. So, so I just called my truck a Dodge Polaris coming home <laughs> with the snowmobile ski. <laughs> it was the funniest thing, but you know, shouldn't have happened in the first place, but it was pretty funny. Even my mechanic, he kind of shook his eyes. I said, put that snowmobile ski. He said, I don't know. And I, it worked. And he said, Man, that's working. I can't believe it. So, at least that's one thing. You got to be crazy enough to try it, right?
couldn't get a wheel on it. So it was it was that or a tow truck or something. Yeah, I had to get something to put under the front. I didn't have a dolly or anything. It'd be nice if I had it. You know, my buddy, I was parked by his driveway. He's got a front end dolly, uh, but I couldn't get a hold of him. So <laughs> uh, he, actually, he returned my message just about the time I got home. <laughs> so I said, no, that's OK. I'm good now. <laughs> Uh, so hopefully today goes well with the van. I don't like tearing around in the van too much in the dead of winter. We got good tires on it. It's just a really big, awkward, heavy thing. And, uh, and it also looks really weird. Somebody driving around a camper, 30 below. Okay, we're gonna go see if I can get in the van. So hope you're having a good day and uh, take care and have fun. It's Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023. It's been a busy few days. <clears throat> I haven't had very much content to share with you, but I've just been running around here and there and back and forth to town. I've kind of been to town more times this week and, uh, than, uh, than I normally am in a month. And I got to go to town a couple more times, uh, once today and once tomorrow. <clears throat> So the reason I went today is I needed to pick up some more lumber. Uh, I, I, I need to finish this one little project for a customer uh, today and by, you know, noon tomorrow. So I have to mill this lumber up. <clears throat> and I also had to place an order for, for a, lots of lumber, but that'll be delivered next week. The store I deal with uh, seems to be very good to me and uh, they offer me very good prices on the quantities of lumber that I buy. Uh, so that's really great, and they're convenient. They're only about 15, 20 miles away. So what I have to do is I've got these one by eights, they're eight foot lengths, and I need to cut them. Um, I don't need to cut them, but I wanna cut them in about four foot lengths. I'm cutting them actually in a 45 inch uh, length off of that eight foot. And then the off cut, I don't need to trim that because ultimately these are all going to be cut in 11 inch pieces. But what I want to do is because there's an off cut, I'll get three uh, two inch wide pieces out of this one by eight and then some. So I'm hoping that, that the sum is about seven eighths of an inch and then I can use that seven eighths of an inch off cut for other parts. But the other parts are longer than 11 inches. <clears throat> so therefore I want to minimize my off cuts among those seven eighths inch pieces. So I've decided that 45 inches is a good place to cut them. And then I'll rip those shorter pieces. And then I'll come back here and cut them all to 11 inches again. Um, I could rip eight foot pieces on the table saw. It's just that when I'm making a little more precise uh, width cut, uh, I prefer the piece not be too long. And that's mostly because it's a little harder to handle, but mostly because uh, lumber being organic it's never going to be perfectly straight and the longer the piece the less perfectly straight it's going to be uh, over the length so I'll cut them to a shorter piece I'll rip them two inches then I'll have my off cut hopefully it's seven eighths or so <clears throat> and then back here for 11 inch pieces I need 611 inch pieces <laughs> so I've got some work ahead of me and uh, that's what I'm doing here today. So I'll bring the camera a little closer and you can watch me use my favorite big old saw here, my good old 1975 Craftsman 12 inch radial arm saw. I love that thing. You'll notice that I had to do some wizardry here because my fence only goes to, you know, 35 inches or so, I need another 10 inches. So I just clamped this piece of scrap to the, to be behind the fence and then clamp this one. It's not super rigid, so I don't want to be banging into this. However, this isn't uh, a precision cut. If it gets to be a little bit too long, that's okay. I just want to maximize my off cut, so hopefully I can use that for something else. The shop is getting a bit congested, <clears throat> so things get a little more inconvenient. There's lots of staples in these, I noticed when I picked them up. I need to be careful of that. 
right to there. This one. And so these are going to end up, these are uh, eight foot, so they're 96 inches. Uh, they're not going to end up be exactly the same length. Uh, this is 45, and that's the balance. So it doesn't have to be exactly, I'm just cutting it at a logical spot so I can handle it a little bit easier. Okay, I've got my fence set to a two inch rip and I can't move my feather board out far enough to do that cut. I could do it freehand. <clears throat> Why do it freehand when you have a magnetic featherboard? That's exactly why I bought this featherboard. For exactly that reason. It doesn't hold as uh, tightly to the table, but uh, it just helps me get it reasonably close to the fence. If I can, uh, I will rip uh, two inch off each one, then I'll move my feather board over, I'll switch to that one, and then two inch off the next one, move the feather board two inch off the next one. Hopefully I end up, I end up with a seven eighths off cut, so I think I'll actually cut this one first all three ways, just to see where I'm going to end up. Cut it this way, and they are a bit wet. But he didn't mind filling my truck with snow. Couldn't just flip the board and let the snow slide off. He had to just take the snow right into my truck. I wasn't sure what that was all about. But. Therefore, I'm running in bypass mode. So be extra careful. Looking good. So that leaves me with just a little over seven eighths off cut, which is perfect. I can trim that to exactly seven eighths and that'll work perfectly for me for some of my parts. So I need to manage my material.
on this board was so great that by the time I got the rip cut to this point, it cracked and broke apart. It's a little dangerous. So that's what I'm left with. If my calculations are correct, that should be more than enough for 600 uh, pieces that are two inches wide and 11 inches long. So I should be able to actually, one advantage doing it this way is you can, you can cut around things like this. I don't know if that's 11 inches, but if it is, I can cut here and then I can start again there. So we'll see. I can't do too much of that because I do have extras here. I don't have that much extra. And then I've got these 7 8 shims here, uh, which is awesome. They're 3 quarter thick and 7 8 wide as a rule. And so I can definitely use those elsewhere in the build. So now I have to take all of this over there through the saw and then bring the, bring the pieces uh, back here. I can actually, I can actually deck them up on the saw and I think we're wrapping them in bundles of 50 and that'll be a dozen bundles. I'm thinking I can cut four at a time. I'll set my stop to 11. This stop system is accurate. However, the way the table mounts to the saw, it's not that accurate. It, it can move. It doesn't usually move much, but it can. So I double check. With the measuring tape. I didn't, I didn't design it this way, but the fact that the, uh, the fence holds the guard up the way it does really makes it nice for measuring to the blade. Yeah, maybe a little less safe, but I don't have any kids running around here, so it should be okay. All right, so what we can do is we should be able to deck up two there, two there, and uh, slice them just like that. Five wide. Let's go to ten high.
pretty good out of that 45 inches. I, it was 44 and a half I needed. So that's the off cut. And then there's this. I put that in the box for the kids at the daycare. Well, that's all I've got today, and uh, I'm going to have to finish this tomorrow because I need to get these done before I uh, go and see my friend, go see the customer. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching me cut up all this lumber. Take care and have fun.